How will today's children function in a dangerous world? What means will they use to carve the future? Will they be equipped to find the answers to tomorrow's problems? Hi, welcome. We are so excited to have you here today. I am Margaret Wilsfall, and I would like to welcome you to the National Educators in Community Serving Our Schools Annual Conference. We are empowering teachers and inspiring students. Let's start off by showing you a class where students are not engaged and are not learning. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression, raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work, and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Today, we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? I think we all remember sitting through a class, just like that, or maybe two. Well, it is my great honor to introduce our next speaker, Jim, who will be speaking on project-based learning, or PDF, which is Learner Center. And Mrs. Susan Carter, she has been a teacher for 28 years, and she's currently the assistant principal at East High School and this year's president of the National Educators Association, Mrs. Susan Carter. Good morning, and thank you. It is an honor to speak to you today on Project-Based Learning, or PBLA Framework for Student Success. When today's students leave the confines of the high school classroom, they must be college and career ready. There's an interesting shift in roles that happens in a PBL unit. The teacher becomes more of a facilitator and the students take more control. You guys are the Red Cross responders. You already looked at news broadcasts and you took down some notices and wonderings. You need to take all of this and you need to bring it together. So I have to write down the aspects of the news broadcast? You got it. Exactly. So Kasim's got it. Kasim can give you some ideas on how to start. But as a facilitator, the teacher needs to be able to ask good questions. She needs to redirect if necessary, you know, give hints but not answers. And that's really a, an interesting role for teachers to learn how to do. Today's workplace needs people who can solve problems, collaborate, and communicate well with others. Today's student must have mental flexibility. Project-based learning is the path forward to where we need to go. According to the Buck Institute of Education, PBL students go through an extended process of inquiry in response to complex questions, problems, or challenges. Rigorous projects are carefully planned, managed, and assessed to help students learn key academic content, practice collaboration, communication and critical thinking, and create high-quality, authentic products and presentations. PBL is more than just a teaching method. It is a revitalization of education enabling students to develop intellectually and emotionally. PBL is well scaffolded for students by using real-world scenarios, challenges, and problems. Students gain useful knowledge with skills that increase during their designated project periods. Structured collaboration develops and enhances student learning by encouraging critical thinking, problem-solving, teamwork and self-management. The projects drive students to make their own decisions, perform their own research, and review fellow experiences during PBL. That aren't fluffed, a lot of eyes and ears open, because people are hungry for that. Innovative classrooms break down the walls of boredom and apathy. PBL helps teachers create environments where, in they and their students work with complex, intriguing situations that foster inquiry, research and the drawing of reasonable conclusions. Students naturally formulate questions such as, what's going on? Why is this happening? What does this mean? What will happen in the future? When they decide to answer these questions, they embark on a journey of thought that may take minutes, hours, or years. In addition to finding resources, developing project timelines, and learning to of to overcome obstacles, 
student have the opportunity to publicly display their work. All right, so I'm almost done with the, with the geometry problem. And uh, let's, uh, let's finish it off now. On March 24th, you're going to stand in front of your peers, you're going to stand in front of your parents, you're going to stand in front of a panel of engineers. You will have data, you will have graphs, and you're going to knock the socks off people. From now Seattle teacher Scott McComb is outlining a project to his ninth grade physics class that will have them creating, building, and testing various wing structures that they will design in teams. McComb is part of a growing group of educators who believe project learning is the most effective way to teach. I try right now, so you know how to do it. When you think about project-based learning, learning that results in demonstrations of performance, real tasks that have brought challenges to the students to solve. You can see that it's in context with the ways in which kids have to be able to be functioning adults. It's quite an improvement for us. Remember our first wing didn't even hold water? Project learning is a hands-on, student-directed activity in which students create something that demonstrates what they have learned. Project-based learning, as with all lessons, requires much preparation and planning. How this works is you start with the essential question. The big question acts as the catalyst, initiate the projects. The teacher allows students to go in new directions, but guide them and helps them stay on course. The essential question is greater than the task at hand. Involve students in the questioning, planning, and project building process. Teacher and students brainstorm activities that support the inquiry and design a timeline for project components with benchmarks. The teacher models to the students how to work collaboratively. The student has different ways to show their work, like essays, performance tasks, exhibitions, demonstrations, portfolios, classroom presentations and oral discussion. Set a time that is designated for reflection upon the daily activity. What we've done for the last 100 years direct teaching, for some students it works, but for most students it doesn't. So for us, project-based instruction is a way that we can reach all students and get them engaged. National educators in communities serving our schools and myself believe that PBL is one of the best ways to connect students and their schools to their surrounding communities and the real world. We believe that projects developed by PBL methods are empowering students and teachers to make a real difference. The opportunities with PBL are endless. PBL is great and should be the standard going forward. It has been an honor to share with you project-based learning and how it can benefit your classroom. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you um, as we're drawing into our morning session. Thank you, Mrs. Susan Carter. Again, we have really enjoyed your um, talk on project-based learning. I don't know about you, but I've learned a few things. But um, when the, the students turn in their project, it should be with a bang and not with a whistle. And it shouldn't be right after they turn it in. Next, our next unit begins on Monday. The project should end with a sense of pride, excitement, and celebration. And with that said, we will be back at 1 o'clock. So don't be late, we've got a full agenda for you this afternoon.